there friends, welcome back to the channel. My name's Alex Lokes and we are into the dull days of winter. So today we are staying inside here in the famous Cigar and Bar Studios in Burlington, Ontario to mix up some photography themed cocktails and to handle that is my good friend James McFarland, the one, the only, Mr. Cigar and Bar. Today we're going to be making some cocktails on a photographic theme. You've got a couple here that you've worked up that you want us to kind of play with and workshop here. Absolutely, and just like um, film photography and developing film, it's all about the balance. And that's one thing that I've learned from watching various cocktail videos, the one that you have put out, and some of the other ones here on YouTube that are wonderful. And it's really gotten me out of like, not just craft beer, but trying out some different cocktails. So a while back, I actually put forward this idea to a bunch of film podcasters on ideas of how to take existing cocktails and sort of give them a photographic theme. So the first one we're going with is the XT, which is Kodak X-Tall or Adox XT3 Bellini Ecofill. And because it's a citric acid based developer, we're going to start off with the Gimlet, which is lime juice, gin, and simple syrup. Except for this one, we're going to swap it out with both an orange juice version and a grapefruit juice version and use the existing recipe. Yes, here we go. So the one thing you should always do is taste your base spirits, especially if it's the first time doing it. So now this one being a local, um, a locally distilled uh, liquor, um, it's going to be hard to tell how it stacks up against your expectations for a gin, so always good to know what you're working with. Exactly. And yeah, they are in Beansville, Ontario. If you've uh, driven along the QEW, you've probably seen signs for them. And it's one place that has really made an impact and has a lot of their yeah. spirits through a lot of LCDOs here in mm -hmm. Ontario. So. Theirs is the, the absinthe that I use when our recipe calls for absinthe. I get their absinthe, it's great. Oh, yeah. nice. Let's give it a try. Ooh. That is full flavor. I wouldn't call it botanical. No, definitely not botanical. Mm. It's like notes of lemongrass and leather in there. Yeah, definitely. Huh. It's nice though. Yeah, it's a, it's a very citrusy, mm -hmm. not, not very herbal or floral, but um, it's definitely, I think there's also a bit of pepperiness in there. I think there's a lot of clove. I was about to say, there's a bit of a yeah. bite at the end. Clove, leather, lemongrass, and pepper. This is a really interesting gin, I like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start off with two and a half ounces of gin, and we have this one's a shaken, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, because it has citrus in it. We have actually a nice local gin, um, Dylan's Unfiltered Gin 22, and that's two and a half ounces with a half ounce of orange juice. Now, normally you'd want to fresh squeeze this, but because we're just trying things out, we're using some store-bought stuff. And that's a half an ounce of orange juice, and then a half ounce of simple syrup. Again store-bought but it's very easy to make your own it is yeah and i'll put a link in the comments below to the kind of master syrups episode from the how to drink channel uh, he goes over how to make all kinds of syrups it's, it's really it's, it's a really in informative video okay you're the master at this <laughs> so start off with our gin here We're going to start with one and a half. Two and a half ounces of gin. Moving on to that half ounce of orange juice. Ooh, can really <laughs> smell the, the gin. gin. Kind of kicks up into the air, doesn't it? And a half ounce of simple syrup. If I had to guess based on the viscosity of this particular store-bought brand, the uh, PC Simple Syrup, it's probably a two-to-one ratio. It's pretty slow. Yeah, 
going to crack some ice into our shaker here. As usual, we do one whole cube and one cube cracked. Nice. You get into a rhythm of it, it works. <laughs> And again, another bar basics thing. I see people do this a lot, where they really hammer down on the top of the shaker to get that closed. You don't have to do that. And all that's going to do is you have to smack it to open it. Is it's just going to further the metal fatigue you're going to get on that. What you do is just going to hold it firmly shut, give it a couple of shakes, and the cold temperature inside will cause it to vacuum seal. You don't need to smack it. it it's closed enough now. And now you can shake the head out. until you feel it's cold enough on the outside. Now you see, I didn't smack that. Still got a hand here though. I didn't <laughs> smack that and it's it's not gonna it's not gonna open up. You're fine. Nice. Smack it again. And now your drink is mixed. There we go. Ah, right there. Double strain. Double strain. Keep that ice out. And because we're just trying this out, we're not going to garnish it, but you basically garnish it with the um, the whole fruit of whatever you use, so in this case, it would be. All right, so this is the XT. X, the XT, an X tall gimlet. Smells. I don't want to say banana, but it's got a kind of a it funk does. on the top. It's his it yeah, yeah, I wonder weird. if orange and gin would have made banana. Huh. Huh. Cheers. Cheers. That really that orange just really marries with the gin. Yeah, it did. That that <laughs> comes up really <laughs> smooth. Wow. That's quite good. You but, taste the gin, the orange is secondary, and um, you get that sweetness on the end that mm -hmm. sort of evens out that evens out the gin. Mm -hmm. I would like to try this though, just a little more citrus in this. So I've got mm. this bottle of Dylan's to match with the gin, a bottle of Dylan's lime bitters. Ooh, nice. Just gonna do a dash or two on the top there. Give it a swirl. And uh, smells a little less banana, a little more lime now. Yeah, so we've definitely got the, have the, the lime nose. in there, yeah. yeah. That finish is a little more, a little more zing to it. It isn't quite yeah. as sweet as it comes out. The finish no. has a bit of zing, a bit of citrusy. Definitely. Okay, well that's a good start. Yeah. Let's um, try this recipe again with the grapefruit. Absolutely. All right, we're about to start the grapefruit one. Yes, grapefruit one. All right. So two and a half ounces in a small shaker. If I remember correctly, up to the top here. Two up to the top, top is two, and up to the line is one and a half. That's up to the second line. It's up to the top is one ounce. Right at the top. That's two and a half. Got our grapefruit juice here, and we're gonna do half an ounce. Every time I see ruby red grapefruit juice, uh, every time I see the ruby red grapefruit juice, it, it strikes me that it is the standard grapefruit juice in the world these days. Uh, when you look at the, the grapefruit that would have been available to cocktail masters like uh, the, the, the Don the Beachcomber and the other Tiki founders, they would have used white grapefruit, a slightly different flavor, slightly different look to the cocktails, and that's something to remember when you're trying to pick up what kind of grapefruit to use. There's the half ounce of simple. And the lime bitters. And we're just going to do two dashes. There we go. Get our ice again, one hole, one cracked. Yes, Tangle, you're on the video too. Yes. <laughs> yes, Tangle. I know you want that one. That's your own
You want to give this one a shake? Yeah, that's all oh, you, man. Trainer, but this is just uh, test batching it. So oh, it definitely has a different look. To it. It's got um, what you'd call in um, in absinthe terms, it's got a loche. It's got a just a a, 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 a creaminess, a cloudiness is what I'm looking for. A cloudiness to its appearance. This is what's really prided in uh, a proper pour of absinthe, which we can do on the channel at some point in the future if anyone has an interest in it. Mm. Oh, here we go. XT takes two. Take two with pump loose. Still smells like banana. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely smells like banana. Cheers. So, cheers. Well, the grapefruit doesn't disappoint with the gin. It still, it still, still works really still well. well with it, yeah. Yeah. A little sweeter. Mm hmm. I'm surprised. This grapefruit I thought would be a little more tart. Well, we are using store-bought stuff. I'm yeah. sure it would be a bit more tart if we uh, yeah. actually did it properly. I find what it's doing is it's bringing out for me what I've described in the past as the bubble gummy flavor in gin. Gin, if you put it with the right kind of sweetness, it, it tends to want to taste a little bit like bubble gum to me. I don't mm. know why. Uh, I made a cocktail many moons ago with grenadine, blue curacao, and melon liqueur in with the gin, and that was like a bubblegum explosion. There was so, so much bubblegum, it was great. Nice. Uh, but yeah, this brings out those hints, those nice Yeah, hints. absolutely. No, I, both are excellent. It, mm. it really depends on the mood you're in. Yeah. Yeah. And those lime bitters still give you a little bit of a complex finish. Definitely needed. Just a little bit there, yeah. It, uh, it gives it that bit of a pop mm -hmm. at the end instead of that slow, sweet finish. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, that's uh, a success with both of these variants. Absolutely. Uh, so. Move on to our next yeah. cocktail. Okay, so for the uh, for the next one, we are going to be doing um, Pyrocat. And Pyrocat, if you're familiar with it, is a amazing type of developers. They're some of the oldest developers out there. They don't quite predate Rodinal, but they're pretty darn close. And um, when I think pyro, again, you think fire, you think smoke, so why not play off of the penicillin? And penicillin actually calls for two types of scotch. The first one is a blended scotch, and the other one is a Islay. A single malt. A single malt Islay. Um, very heavily peated. So for the blended, this is an eight-year-old Islay Mist, and I was actually introduced to this one by an uncle of mine oh, yeah. as his daily drinker. This uh -huh. is the one that if you just want something at the end of the day, this is the one he reaches for because it tastes more expensive than it is. <laughs> I like if I'm reaching for just a daily drink, uh, like an everyday drink of scotch. Uh, single malt, a Glenfiddich 12 year, because it's just a nice, clean, no bells and whistles, just clean scotch. It's a good baseline. So let's give uh, our blended malt a try here. Cheers. To Ross Flowers. <laughs> Trying to taste out what that flavor is. There's something that I know it what it is. That smoke. It's, uh, it's got smoky, yeah, and it's got that. It's definitely smoke. In the way that a lot of single malts, uh, in the way that, <clears throat> in the way that a lot of Islay malts go, it's got smokiness that borders on the medicinal. It mm. almost tastes like a disinfectant smells. Not because of the alcohol, but because of the smokiness. It's in that kind of medicinal flavor space. Oh, uh, definitely, yeah. No, There's it's... something there, something really sweet that's hiding under that smoke. I want to say cherry. I think you're right. Uh, 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 definitely a stone fruit. 
I also I want to say it might be a passion fruit, but that's probably because the smokiness is skewing that. Mm. It's probably I think it's like a peach sweetness, a peach or a cherry sweetness. But yeah, something with a pit, something like a stone fruit like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's uh, there's a nice flavor in there that complements the smokiness very well. Because it's very easy for these I and I malts to get ridiculously smoky very fast. It's kind of like the um, the uh, old trend to have IPAs like super hoppy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's our blended malt. What do you say we give a proper tasting to one of our single malts here? Now this would be one that if I had to give a gift of scotch to somebody or had good company over, a good friend, brother in arms almost, this is what I would get. And this is McClellan's Islay Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. This is a little bit more expensive. A little more upgrade, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus it has a cork. It's got a nice cork. You know what the definition of a dram of whiskey is? I do not. Is as much or as little as the poorer is willing to give you. <laughs> no more or well, less. I'm a very generous soul. <laughs> it's bready. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's a hint of the smoke that's to come. There's yeah. a bit there. Oh, yeah. On the nose, you can also smell a little bit salty. A little bit um, of a salty iodine space. Just a yeah. little bit of a hint of iodine. Yeah. Well, salty. Immediately, the mouthfeel on that is so much smoother than the blended malt. It's Definitely. just creamy and just. Mm. It flows nicely. It, it goes down yeah. just like super easy. This is very dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Creamy, little notes of caramel. Mm -hmm. and that smoke just gets you right up into the sinuses. And um, only a sacrum. <clears throat> and only a sacrum. It's got a bit of orange oil. Yep. Yep. Throughout. There it is. Yep. It almost makes you think that there should be some chocolate in there, but there's smoke instead. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, those are our base components, so let's see what we can do with them. Let's uh, work some magic with them. <laughs> Alright, so our power cut starts with a very heavy pour, two ounces of blended malt scotch. That's right at the top of that jigger. That's a grand, I got the grand. We've got three quarters of an ounce of cranberry juice. Now today we're going to go with this uh, cranberry cocktail. You can also, if you want to workshop it um, a little more dryly, you can go with 100% cranberry juice, like I do in some of my cocktails. And the reason going with cranberry juice is it gives a uh, darker look to it, which is more close to what you would get with fresh Pyrocat HD. And then after talking a bit before we started, we're going with a vanilla syrup instead of a simple or a honey syrup. Okay. Based on the original recipe, uh, this, um, <clears throat> yeah, sorry. based on the cocktail that we're kind of riffing on with this Pyrocat cocktail, uh, it was a penicillin and it calls for a honey ginger and f flavor profile to the syrups. Uh, we decided not to go with the honey, but I thought that uh, we needed a little more depth of flavor to the sweetness, so not just a simple, so we're going to go with the vanilla simple. And the vanilla simple is simply uh, a one-to-one uh, -one simple syrup with a couple of drops of vanilla extract, pure vanilla extract added, and then I took three beans chopped way up, so I got three fresh vanilla beans in the uh, in the pot when I was making it, and then this extra vanilla bean in here, it's not doing much. I'm not saying it's infusing more vanilla. It is, maybe a little bit, but mostly it's here to identify for me what 
what syrup I've got in my hand. Because a vanilla syrup can look an awful lot like a honey syrup unless you've got a whole vanilla bean in there. That's a half an ounce of the vanilla syrup. Okay. And the final ingredient is, um, not the final ingredient, um, uh, three quarter ounce of uh, ginger beer. Oh, that's the last ingredient. Okay. So we we'll start off again with add our Benedict ingredient for a quarter ounce. Quarter ounce of your high lace scotch. And that's the bottom line. Bottom line. I love that ginger. Was it we're doing three quarters? Three too much. <laughs> Save that for later. Now that we've got most of the ingredients in our glass here, <clears throat> now that we've got most of our ingredients in our shaker tin here, I'm going to add a little bit of fresh muddled ginger because our next ingredient is ginger beer, but I just really want to make that ginger pop. So we're going to add a little bit more in there. Yep. Now the funny thing about ginger um, is the best way to peel it is with a spoon. And I'm not making that up. You just take the spoon roughly along the edge and it peels that skin right off while leaving the vast majority of the flesh underneath. And you can't do this with a knife, you can't do this with a potato peeler, it just won't work. It'll take too much of the ginger. And this gives you pretty much all you need, just simply with a spoon there. Pungent, <laughs> you might say. You miss a bit. And you don't need to get all of the skin off. It's not like this is going to be going in the drink. It's just, you know, you can you can leave it, you can take it, you can leave it, but it's, it's I, I like to just peel it off. Give you more surface area of ginger and less skin to actually infuse the flavor in the drink. We got just a couple of bits of ginger there, about a quarter inch thick, each uh, slightly smaller than a postage stamp, and we're going to drop those in our shaker tin. Now, I know that we're going to get now, if we were to shake this, then I wouldn't need to do anything else with this because the aeration of the ice is really going to gonna make that break up those flavors in the ginger. So this is a stirred drink, so we're gonna go with a muddler. And we're just gonna gently muddle this in our liquor here. Just to squeeze it and break it up a little bit. That should give it some nice ginger notes in there. Mm. But just in case we haven't added enough ginger, our next step is some ginger beer. We have here the Great Gentleman Spicy Ginger Beer. This one is good. If, you get, if you're looking for a ginger beer and you get this Great Gentleman Ginger Beer, the regular one, it is not very spicy. It's, I find it really disappointing. It's a spicy one has that spice to it. The other one that I really like for this kind of purpose, if you can find it, is the Old Jamaica. And that is a standard brand in the UK. Um, you can find it in a lot of like British shops. They've got cans of uh, Old Jamaica. But here in Ontario, you can also find the Old Jamaica brand of ginger beer just in no frills. It is a no frill brand and it is perfect. And it's got that fire. You buy all these fancy artisanal top shelf craft brewed ginger beers and they just taste too sweet there's not enough ginger but this one and the old jamaica are the ones that do it for me perfect and it calls for three quarters of an ounce that's three quarters of an ounce there so let's give this some more ice and because we're not shaking it really no point in doing any uh a whole cube, but we're just going to do two cubes cracked. And I don't 
think I have done a stirred drink on my channel yet. So it's an opportunity to show you when you're using a bar spoon, again, there's a little bit of bar basics. Uh, you don't want to just stir like that, where the spoon continually changes its orientation relative to the outside of the container. You want to stir with the spoon consistently facing inwards. And that's somewhat where these grooves come in place that allow you to easily do that. And you can pass it off to yourself as you twirl it with your uh, index finger and middle finger, you can pass it off to your thumb and the thumb continues it. And that's just going to swirl around and around against the, against the outside of the container with the spoon side always facing in. And you're waiting, I got one finger down here to feel how cold the shaker tin is. This is a lot easier if you're going to stir in a shaker tin. It's not as visual as putting it in a crystal uh, mixing glass, but uh, it does allow you to feel readily through the metal tin when it's at a cold enough temperature. And I'd say that just about there now. You can really see the frosting on the tin there. That's one of the things I look for, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to garnish this with two large cubes. cubes. This is a shaker tin, so I can re readily use a Hawthorne strainer on to strain my drink. But if you're going to be using a glass uh, mixing vessel, it's what's usually called for is a julep strainer, which is a kind of a spoon-shaped strainer with a handle that you put in there. That's not to say that you have to use one. You've only got a Hawthorne strainer, and it's the right size for your crystal mixing vessel. Just use a Hawthorne strainer instead. Phillips strainer is not a necessary piece of equipment. Nice and red. Well, it definitely looks like freshly mixed fire cat. A little clearer though. Now if I were to garnish this, I would make a couple of bits of candied ginger and skewer them with a cranberry. Absolutely. Or a little side of cherry, because if you can't, you know, the cranberries, if you can't just get like fresh whole cranberries, you might just want to, if you have a cherry handy, the cherry will give you the same visual appeal, appeal as the cranberry. Mm, definitely. It smells smoky. <laughs> well, cheers. Cheers. Hmm. There's enough sweetness there. The sweetness is there, definitely. It tastes smoky. It doesn't taste very proofy. It doesn't mm -hmm. really taste like a really uh, like, a, like a drink that's got more than two ounces of scotch in it. Makes it dangerous. I think we can do better. I think we can uh, mix this up again with mm. a little more ginger beer. I think we're still even with the muddled ginger, we're still short a still bit, of, bit of ginger profile in there. Definitely short. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So I've made a couple changes to this mix now. Hopefully we can get a little more of the flavors in there to kind of boost a little bit more. I increased the ginger beer up from three quarters of an ounce to a full two ounces. And I increased the cranberry juice from three quarters of an ounce to one ounce because it was just also hiding in the background. Very bit. much. So. But I left the, the scotch, uh, scotches and the, uh, the, the uh, vanilla syrup exactly the way they were. So we're gonna give this a good stir. Let's see what we've done. <clears throat> Let's see what we've done with the flavor now. It still smells smoky, so we knew yeah. that was gonna happen. There's more bite. There's more ginger there. Oh yeah, the ginger levels 
right where we yeah, want it to be. Yeah, there's just enough ginger there that it doesn't fly under the radar. Now this isn't something like a mule where the ginger is supposed to take front place with the base spirit. Mm. This is meant to be combined in there. This is mostly a smoky scotchy drink. You know, because we want to have a little more bite and fire to it. So it, it pokes its head in there. Definitely. I would say if we had access to a really fiery ginger syrup, that at least a couple of dashes of that wouldn't hurt. But mm. in in the absence of a ginger syrup, I think we should try just to bring out some of the smoke in a little bit more. Uh, add a couple of dashes of the saline solution. Good call. So I've got my saline here in an old angle ball. When they make as many cocktails as I do that call for... Uh, <laughs> half ounce or whole ounce pours of Angostura, you end up with quite a few bottles left over. <laughs> so I've got uh, a couple of dashes there. Uh, just a straight up salt and water. And when you're dealing with dashes, the concentration really doesn't matter. I basically add enough salt to hot water until it just won't dissolve no more. You know, you just keep going until it's about as salty as it's going to be. Now you get your concentrated saline solution, and again, in a couple dashes, it doesn't matter if you've got a one-to-one -one saline solution or a five-to-one salt-to-water saline solution. It's really not going to make a difference. It's just going to add a little bit of salt. Mm. So let's uh, combine that a bit there with a the big cube, and let's see how that changes it. Mmm. Oh. That opens up the smoke at first, and then you get the salt in the middle, yep. and then the sweetness on the finish. Definitely. So it's got a much oh. better evolution with just a little bit of sa saline in there. And just enough bite to make it interesting. Yeah. Now you could also, if you're making this, add an extra little float of ginger beer on the oh. top. Mmm. And that changes the nose immediately. Mm. And it just gives you that final oh. mouth feel on the outside of your mouth, just a nice ginger finish with that sweetness. Oh, but it, it doesn't interrupt that initial smokiness or that yep. that secondary saltiness. Yeah, it's just it's there just, at the end, it's and it makes it feel like that that spicy. You know, you get that spicy <laughs> feel. Oh. That is a fine drink right there. Oh, I think we have a winner. Yeah. <laughs> It's not often when you're uh, trying new things that uh, you end up getting a couple of winners. In the yeah, show. yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for uh, joining us for this video. It is definitely something that is not normal for my channel. If you are interested in cigars, bars, and of course, pipes and tobacco and assorted accoutrements, please subscribe and hit that bell notification icon on James's channel. You'll find that in the link in the description below. And if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing, hitting that bell notification icon. And if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. And as always, my name's Alex Lowe's. Get out there, stay safe, drink responsibly. And if you want to drink irresponsibly, make sure you have a safe ride home. Quest in a sandbox game, like a sandbox video game, the Mintless Mai Tai. You have unlocked the achievement, Mintless Mai Tai. <clears throat>